Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this video, we're going to take a look, we're going to get a three-dimensional look of the ventricles. So we're looking at the ventricles and uh, just a brief discussion on cerebral spinal fluid. I have an entire video dedicated to cerebral spinal fluid and um, it's diagrammed. But in this video, we're going to take, like I said, a 3D look at the ventricles. Um, the ventricles are basically internal chambers inside the brain that house cerebral spinal fluid. And the cerebral spinal fluid is made from choroid plexus or ependymal cells that are located at the base of these ventricles. So ependymal cells essentially produce the cerebral spinal fluid that surrounds the brain, it cushions the brain, and it goes down the, uh, the spinal cord also and supports the spinal cord um, with uh, providing it with nutrients, getting rid of waste products, and, and as I mentioned, just providing um, support and cushion for the brain anytime it's jostled. So it provides a space between the brain and the, uh, the cranium. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in into the ventricles. Uh, as I said, these are basically chambers on the inside. So when you actually look at a di dissection of the brain, when you cut it open, it's gonna appear as just, um, you know, as just voids, like nothing's there. Uh, but in a, in a, on a brain that's alive and working, it's filled with that cerebral spinal fluid. So there's four chambers that we're gonna be looking at. Uh, and the largest of these chambers is called the lateral ventricle. Okay, so this lateral ventricle, there's two of them. Uh, on, the, on the left side of your screen, you see one that, uh, where we took out the cerebrum. So let's, go, let's take a look at the other side and let's remove the cerebrum on, on this one too so you can get a better view. So here's the lateral horn, okay? Or the lateral ventricle, sorry. And you can see the lateral ventricle on the other side as well, okay? So it's just lateral to the corpus callosum. Okay, so the corpus callosum is uh, commissure uh, tissue that connects the, the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere. Let's get rid of that too there. All right, so let's actually get rid of that, that nervous tissue also. And we'll get rid of that also because we don't want to discuss that today. There we go. So you can kind of get a better view as to where the, um, where the ventricle is located. So you have the lateral ventricles because they're the, on the lateral most aspect. So the lateral ventricle has uh, multiple parts to it as well. This is the, the central part. And on the front most, this extends into the frontal lobe. This is called the frontal horn or the anterior horn. Okay. And then in the parietal, you'll have the central. And then just below it on the temporal side, inside the temporal, um, uh, temporal lobe, you have the inferior horn or sometimes also called a temporal horn. I think most textbooks, uh, yours in particular, will have the um, term or the inferior horn. And then on the most posterior aspect, you have the posterior horn. And as you can guess, this will go into the occipital lobe. So this is also called the occipital horn. Okay, so that one, two, three, four parts, this is the lateral horns. Now, connecting the lateral horns, now all of these, all of these uh, chambers are connected with each other, okay? And so connecting the lateral, um, the lateral ventricles with the third ventricle, you have a, what's called an inter, interventricular foramen, okay? Interventricular, meaning in between, so it's kind of right here in between. Let me zoom in right there so you can get a better look at it. So you see this foramen right here, okay? So this is the interventricular, so inter meaning in between, right? I-N-T-E-R. And so this is the third ventricle. This is a, uh, a thin, a thinner and smaller ventricle. And if you'll notice, this lies just in between the thalamus. Okay, so it's in between the thalamus and just uh, above the, the midbrain. Okay, so if you remember with the thalamus, you have a, you have two, two lateral um, aspects of the thalamus. So you have a right and a left. And in between that, that empty space, if you recall that empty space in the thalamus, if you go to the previous videos, uh, that space is actually taken up by the third ventricle. All right. Now, connecting, as I mentioned before, all these ventricles are connected, and there's four. So we have one, two, and then connecting the third ventricle with the fourth ventricle, okay, is what's called the cerebral aqueduct. And that cerebral aqueduct contain, connects the third ventricle with the fourth. Okay, so it lies just in front of the cerebellum and just behind the pons, so in between the two. And this uh, fourth ventricle has what's called a lateral recess. Okay, now you'll notice that this fourth ventricle will then drain into 
the central canal that runs down the, this is the medulla oblongata, but this will continue to run all the way down. Here, let, let me show this. This will continue to run all the way down, sorry, all the way down the spinal cord. So if you recall that, that transverse cut with the spinal cord, right? So we, here we have our gray matter and our white matter, and then our central canal will run right down the middle, right? Okay, so here's a commissure uh, tissue of our gray matter. Remember that Honda H? And it runs all the way down the brain. Okay, and that runs, and the cerebral spinal fluid will run all the way down the spinal cord from that. All right, guys, I think that actually does it. This is gonna be a pretty short video. Uh, again, this is the ventricles of the brain, the internal chambers that, that house the cerebral spinal fluid, okay? So you have the lateral ventricles, the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. Okay, guys, thanks for listening, and good luck in your studying.